The reference uh, variable remembers the type of object in memory and, of course, the address of the object location. So, uh, in this program so far, what we have is uh, we create object of this type by using the new operator, so we can draw it as a box uh, somewhere in computer memory, and uh, it has the code integer, and it has this reference uh, to a string name description, and of course widget is a reference uh, to this object. So this reference remembers the address of this object. So let's add constructor uh, that populates the code uh, and the description with specific uh, uh, text uh, and the code. So to do this uh, we can perhaps start with existing constructor. So we can say code equals zero and the description equals uh, unknown. Okay, just to indicate that uh, we really don't know what this description is, this is just a default uh, constructor. So in this case, if the object is created, uh, so this time uh, using the code that we have uh, currently in our main method, of course the widget will be uh, uh, storing address uh, of this object and we have the code and we have the description but this time the description is initialized with something like this somewhere in computer memory so therefore this description will contain reference to this object so by doing new widget we create the widget itself and of course uh, the uh, java um, compiler will generate code to allocate string with uh, this specific uh, text in it so this is how this changes uh, after this action. So then uh, uh, we can also uh, define uh, multiple constructors. And uh, constructors, just like other methods in our class, are also methods. They just have this specific uh, signature that has no return type, and they must match the name of the class to become uh, recognizable. Uh, class constructors. So the second constructor, I will try to copy and paste what I already have and add my second constructor to this uh, class and this type. Uh, this time I will use integer code and string uh, description as parameters to use here. And let's just resize this a little bit. And uh, so this time, of course, the code uh, will be initialized with the code and description will be initialized with the description, which will be given to the constructor uh, as uh, two parameters. Uh, but we need to distinguish between the parameters that constructor gets and uh, the data attributes stored inside of our object. So in this code, we will use the this keyword to refer to the instance of our object in computer memory. So once the new operator creates this object in memory, um, inside the constructor we can access uh, the internal parts of our uh, of our object, these data attributes, by using this keyword referring explicitly to instances of, of this integer and this string. And of course these, without any qualification, correspond to constructor parameters. So we can of course demonstrate this uh, creation. Uh, but uh, again to demonstrate uh, what I will do now is that uh, I will just say widget equals uh, new widget and uh, we'll do it the second time. Uh, but this time I will provide code 1 to 3 and description um, uh, that says uh, widget. Okay, so something like this. And uh, we will repeat uh, this uh, uh, output statement just to display the object the second time. I will run the code and without surprise uh, the first uh, output statement uh, demonstrates that we invoke, invoke the default constructor 
uh, the, simply the uh, constructor without any parameters mm -hmm. and uh, we get zero and unknown and the second time we have one two three and widget uh, printed but the important point here i think uh, is uh, that uh, the first time we create an object um, like this and of course it has the code and it has the description in it and we do some work with this uh, object but then we take the same reference and we uh, recreate the widget and we say new widget and of course every time we invoke new operator um, it creates brand new copy of the object so this will be another object uh, in memory that will contain both code and description and this time widget the same object reference will be pointing to i'll just use this original uh, declaration of this widget and this time it will be pointing to the second instance of our object and this connection is lost and when uh, uh, connection with an object is lost then this object will be marked for garbage collection essentially it becomes no longer accessible in any way uh, from our program and java keeps uh, a reference counter internally and when it notices that we lost uh, 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 all of the references to this object it will be essentially removed from memory at some point and this memory again will become available for creation of new objects so this is our uh, new instance and of course we're printing 123 and widget so the idea of overloaded methods is that the method name and its parameter list like this parameter list right here um, formulate the method signature so the name and list of parameters so the methods in class with the same name are permitted as long as method uh, has a different parameter list in our example we have two constructors with clearly distinct uh, lists of parameters and therefore they um, this type of technique is uh, um, recognized as a method overloading